CNN has obtained the 911 call that led two Dallas police officers to shooting and killing a mentally ill man last June. And on the recording, you can hear that victim, Jason Harrison's mother, ask the 911 operator to please send trained police officers to help take her son to the hospital. Have a listen. Where's emergency? Yeah, my son needs to be taken to Parker. He's bipolar schizophrenia. What's the address? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's really rational. He probably will be resisting. Do they send out training in tomorrow, please? Yeah, they do. Yeah, he's just, uh, he just off the train. He's incoherent. I, okay. He's incoherent, and I, I'm, I'm, I go out of town, seen by my mother, and I come back, and bar and hour, and I can't get it. And okay, what's his name? If I'm really afraid. What's he's his Lord. name? Okay, any weapons? Anybody hurt? No, but he's okay. he, he talking about. He's talking about chopping people up. And now I want to show you what happened when the police did arrive. And I do have to warn you that the police body cam video we're about to show you is certainly graphic and without question disturbing. Police. Hello. How are you doing, man? What's going on? Who's that? Chopping up people in the sun. Bipolar schizo. What's going on? You drop that for me. Drop that for me, guy. Jay! Drop the. Jay! Drop it. Jay! Don't shoot! Don't shoot! Oh, they can't watch out! Oh, they can't watch out! Drop it. Shots fired. The body cam did not stop recording, and now I want to show you a clip from shortly after the shooting occurred, and you can hear. EMTs who arrived on the scene talking about how they knew this victim from a previous call. Here, a couple of weeks ago, I mean, we knew it was just a matter of time, something else went down. You got another floor? Yeah, yeah. For him, he was threatening his mom, and his brother got his mom. Over there. I think so. He had a knife, his brother had a gun, <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. They took him to a Green Oaks, I believe. Joining me now to talk about the appropriate way for police to handle a call involving a mentally ill person, perhaps like this scenario, is Kristen Roman. She's the mental health liaison officer for the Madison, Wisconsin Police Department, and she's part of the unit that focuses just on calls involving mentally ill people. Kristen, thank you so much. Uh, Captain, it's just great to have you on the program in the wake of our coverage of this story. When you see that tape, and granted you were not there, you're only privy to this tape, is there anything that stands out in your mind, either in defense of the officers or in defense of the victim? Well, Ashley, police respond every day, sometimes several times a day, to individuals and families in crisis due to a mental illness. And, you know, too often we see these interactions uh, end in tragedy uh, like this. And what we do in the Madison Police Department is try to work very proactively on these issues uh, through our mental health liaison officers and now our full-time mental health officers to reach out to people like Jason and his mother prior to any crisis situation arising. So yesterday on the program, Captain, we had um, a, a police trainer who said he would use this as an example to teach what to do, meaning that this was a textbook case that the officers performed perfectly, saying that they were within something called a hula hoop. They, they had no egress. The man was holding a, a screwdriver. They say that they were lunged at. Do you see this as a textbook case of how to handle a call? Um, that was clearly about a mentally ill person? Well, I think that uh, the comments that were provided were very much focused on a tactical sort of response. And what we try to uh, train our officers to, to think about are the ways in which we can engage with people on a more personal level. So uh, some of the things that we encourage officers to do uh, with individuals that they know uh, might be challenged uh, by a mental illness or some other issue is to uh, sort of uh, begin the conversation very much on a personal level, on a first name basis, and uh, to try to establish that rapport 
as early on as possible uh, in the encounter with somebody. So one thing I noticed, uh, and I've watched this tape so many times, and I'm just now hearing something I hadn't heard before. When the mother comes out of the doorway, she says three things. He's off his chain, he's bipolar schizo, and he's talking about chopping people up. I had not heard that one before. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to look at it from the police officer's perspective who had seconds to react to a man who's talking about chopping people up and now he's holding a sharp, dangerous, potentially dangerous weapon, a screwdriver. How much does that change this whole notion that you say you gotta be able to engage and have a conversation when it might just be seconds where no engagement could be possible? Well, I think context is really everything. And certainly if officers have a background or a knowledge about somebody that they're interacting with, and as, as I said earlier, one of the things we try to do is establish a relationship with people uh, with mental illness and their families before a crisis occurs. And so the hope in doing that is that we would have that rapport already established and would probably have a broader context within which to consider uh, the circumstances of any uh, particular day. So for instance, mm -hmm. if the officers had known uh, about the history and had had previous contacts uh, with Jason or his mother, uh, there could have been a connection made right upon contact. One right. of the officers perhaps contacting uh, the mother and the other maybe addressing uh, Jason individually. And they would probably have a better understanding of the likelihood or the potential for a real threat this is based tough. on previous yeah. interactions. This is tough because apparently, according to uh, an affidavit, um, they had responded, according to the family, they had responded to this house over a hundred times. Uh, Captain Roman, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. I appreciate your work and thank you for your service. Thank you, my pleasure.